Can you take us to uh, how the name self-service came about? Was this uh, during the production time earlier on? Uh, give us a little insight about the name self-service. Well, I'm 5%. So, you know, I went up north. I got knowledge of self. And, you know, I've been studying mathematics ever since. To this day, I study my math. I'm not as versed as I was back then, but I, I live by, you know, the 12 jewels. But my my attribute is Lord, natural self, ominous, and scientific God of law. You know what I'm saying? So niggas knew me as self. So I'm making the bees. And nigga, I, niggas said, man, self-service. Me and my niggas was talking one day. I said, yeah, that's going to be my motherfucking name, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and this time get to tell you, nigga. And that, that's how it came about, like, point blank. It's behind me being righteous, self is my attribute, and then the service just had a good ring with the production shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I was right. going to That's a good. I was gonna ask you that, man. And I had a funny feeling that that's probably where it came from as far as the 5%, but yeah. I wasn't 100% sure, man. That's dope, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, sincere. I don't know. I'm sure you know. You know what I mean. Especially like the '80s, um, yeah. early '80s. You know, '90s. You know, as far as the five percent nation and some Muslims and all of that was really heavy out here in in, in this boroughs and Long Island. Yeah. Um, you know. So yeah. I mean, yeah. it was like one of the groups that inspired me was Wu Tang. Period. Okay. Mm. The Riz wow. is like one of my inspirations with Daniel started me because once I got that keyboard in the basement, I'm fucking, I'm like, damn, then I found the Rizzo used the ASR 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, shit yeah, right, right, right. like, yeah, I'm going to make some Wu-Tang beat. That's the God. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And, uh, you know, and so, you know, if, if, if anybody do the history on me, my sound ain't a normal hip hop sound. Okay. Like, I don't, I tried to stay because Wu Tang was so different, and then you had the 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 Nas, you had the NWAs back in ninety three, ninety four. This is the shit I came home to. So I'm I'm listening to all this shit, but I'm like, how do I stay away from everybody else? Mm-hmm. So the ASR ten made me say, all right, let me just sample different shit. I tried to make my sound totally different than everybody else. That's why I was, with my intros to the beat drops to everything from like like it's like um. Shut him down was exciting. That shit tore the club up. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Black Trump was <laughs> just totally different at the time too, because it had the little yeah. like it's totally different, and that's why they loved it. But then when I when I got to like six feet on the ground, come through for story Noriega and Styles P. You know what I'm saying? Fat Joe shit, the opposite of track. I make my intros, then drop and hit niggas in the face and go totally left field from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That yeah. that was my whole sound at the time. So, but my inspiration, hands down, was rhythm, bro. The whole Wu Tang move. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. I wanted to ask you because I was curious about, you know, being that you said you 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 started making beats the way you started. You know who inspired you, or yeah. you know if you had anybody mentoring you, like as far as showing you little tricks. Um, but at least even hearing you say the RZA, that's that's it makes sense. Yeah, it wasn't nobody that um, helped me. That's the crazy part. Like my hood was shady, <laughs> shady bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, it was niggas there. Like I said, Steve Stout, shot my. It was niggas there, and then I would come out, but. Because I was on some street shit, I was more in the clique that niggas didn't want to fuck with. Right. Right. Like my clique was the niggas like you don't want to fuck with. But <laughs> everybody in the neighborhood knew us. You know what I'm saying? So right. I oh shit, shot make beats? Cool. I got this ass. Let me go talk to Shot. Then I couldn't catch Shot. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Steve down in there. Oh, let me go talk to Steve. We couldn't catch Steve. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, she was just that. So I said, you know what? Niggas ain't going to talk to me. I'll figure this shit out myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. like I said, the inspiration just came from then. It was no YouTube or nothing back then. It was just me listening my ears to the sound and then saying, all right, I got to make my own shit, but I can't sound like the rhythm. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, 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 right. So, right. you know, it, it caused me to experiment a lot, but I had no help from nobody with the shit, man. I did it myself. Hmm. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Hip hop heads uh always kind of look in the liner notes for producer. Um, you know, 
anything that we can just to feel like we're part of that project. You were uh, working with heavy hitters, uh, Smith and Wesson, Onyx. Um, why was your name not being thrust in the forefront? Was there something going on in industry or did you want it that way, uh, particularly to be behind the scenes? See, and I wanted, I was a street dude no matter what. So street niggas, the first code is you don't get in front of no cameras. You know how niggas don't don't say my name. Niggas take pictures <laughs> and niggas hide from the picture. I, I grew up over of that. So no matter what, I'm getting my money. I'm like, okay, let me just hide in the background. I didn't want to be in that limelight. And, it, you know, I said that in, a, in an interview recently. You know, I just come from that era where we didn't want to be in the limelight. As long as I get my money... And I'm everything cool, cool. I'm back low on the low, creeping, mm. you know, doing what I do. Um, but, you know, in hindsight, when I look at it, it's like, okay, if I would have done that back then, you know, I probably would have been in another situation by now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If I would have jumped out front and went with the whole publicity part of it. Because at, at the time I did the Onyx joint, that – the Shut Them Down was one of the first songs God Bless the Dead DMX came out on. Right, 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 right. right one right, of the right. first. If not the first, one of the first that he publicly like went out on. And then Shut Them Down, the remix, I did the remix too, and Big Pun, God Bless the Dead, was on the remix that's with Noriega. Right, that's right, yeah, yeah. It was on me and Noriega. So um, I just didn't want, you know, I, I could have went out and then everybody was talking about me buzzing and I kept getting placements after that. That's why I got over 25 platinum albums I was part of because placements was just rolling in from there. And I could have jumped out, you know, did a little dance. I'm just not that nigga for that. You know what I'm saying? I've never been, you know, respectfully. respectfully. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know nobody to do it, but, you know, and to this day, I'm just now doing interviews. Mm. I haven't done this shit right. in years. I'm just right. now doing it. And right. I'm good. Like, and I'm mind you, I'm good without music. I do the right thing. I got shit happening outside of entertainment. So, you know, like I said, I got 18, I got 14 kids, big house in my lake. I'm good. Yeah, Off, yeah, and, yeah. and it ain't even the music shit. I still get residuals and all that, but I just ain't never been that person. But right now I know at this point, I see how history is getting rewritten a little bit. And by me being quiet, niggas don't know who the fuck I am. And I'm responsible for a lot of shit in so, the 90s, a lot. And then other people be saying that it's them that did it or because I don't, they know I don't go public. It's just like, you know, and I let the shit go for a while. But, you know, well, that, now that, I'm going public. That was amongst... Everything you've done and all of that, one of the things that interests us a lot was exactly that that you're speaking on right now. Um, because us, you know, as fans and, and loving the music and everything, to then sort of find out, like, wait a minute, he did this beat and he did that one? And I used to rock out to that Black Trump, you know, and, and mm -hmm. thinking that maybe somebody else did it. So we were, you know, me and Sincere were both kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, yeah. Who is this guy? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, so that's one of the reasons why we wanted to, you know, invite you on our platform. Um, and I appreciate y'all for that, you know. And um, my people always told me I should have been with public, but like I said, I just haven't been that dude. And and if anybody really do the homework on me and look at my discography, like I really got records. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. It, <laughs> and, and, absolutely. And it, and, and being quiet is cool, but then at, at a certain, I just don't like the fact that, you know, I I contributed a lot to hip hop and I don't get mentioned too much. If I got to give myself my own flowers, that's what I'm doing now is give myself right. my flowers. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and, the, and the ill part is, it's Googleable. It is. It is. It's not like a nigga lying. My, my government name is Edward Henson. If you go on these records, you'll see E. Henson and Ja Rule, E. Henson, Jay-Z, E. Henson, Bone Thug, E. Henson, like, like, you know, 
So at the end of the day, when niggas don't say nothing, I respect them too. It's like, all right, well, you don't give a fuck, but guess what? I'm going to talk about it now. And it's a different day and time. It's a different day and time. Back then, niggas were so scared that even, like, and, and mind you, and I'm not trying to sound crazy, but there's a lot of niggas like me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot. I know a lot. And I talk to them regularly, producers, mm -hmm. that done shit and they don't never get no shine or they're props for it. So when it comes down to it, it's like, you know, I'm kind of inspiring them now. Right, and back right. then, we always thought that if we speak up, we get blackballed or you won't get no burn or niggas don't. But today's the day of the story, man. Niggas want to know the backstory of the shit, the history of hip hop. Niggas want to know where it came from, who really did such and such. And you can't get blackballed today. <laughs> it's too much yeah. fun. <laughs> and to right. be honest, and to keep it frank, nigga, you can't black yeah. on me. It's the internet, nigga. A nigga gonna keep rocking. You can't do nothing about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't care right. who you is. You can't stop that if the story is interesting enough, and especially if a nigga space stating facts. If a nigga lying, that's one thing. But if a nigga telling facts and true stories, like everything I tell and I talk about is actual back. I'm not going to lie. That's like lying on your dick. Like you lying on some pussy. You know what I'm mean? saying? Like making your dick going to fall off. That's the reason. Like, you know, you think your dick going to fall Nah, man. No, I'm not doing that. Nigga, I put in a lot of work, man. A lot. And the niggas that know, know. There's a lot of people that know and they just don't say nothing. So if you don't say nothing, it's cool. I'll say it myself. You know? now, do you think that also has to do with like let's say the circle that you might have been, you know, maybe running with, that there were people in the industry, like you said before, right? Like cats didn't mess with you and your crew because they knew how you guys got down. Do you think that translated into the industry? Like maybe cats were just kind of like, you know, that you know, you know, I've, I've heard a lot that within the industry there's like a certain circle, right? There's a cer certain network of. Now you talking? You know what I mean? So <laughs> does that have anything to do with it? And what I, I mean, mean is, what I mean, is, how come it's so easy that, for example, if you see somebody like a, um, who did you mention? Steve Stout. He's done plenty of interviews. I've seen a lot of interviews with him. Mm -hmm. I've, not, you know, and I'm not not to be, you know, like you just said yourself, but I've never heard anybody mention your name in any interview. Anybody that you've been affiliated with, whether it was a record exec or, you know, like you mentioned, like the Irv Gotti's. So I don't mention it. it's crazy though. But then so when you when you first heard about me, right? Then you go and Google and say, all right, hold on, who is this nigga? Yeah. Like yeah. and I, I I tell people that don't know my like, yeah, Google it. Yeah. And then oh, you that's... see it's not like I'm not lying. My oh, name is on God. these records. I produce these records. And then you start to say to yourself, like, why is this the question you just asked me? Why niggas ain't talking about it? And my concept to it is these dudes want the limelight so bad. That they scared you'll take it away from them. <laughs> and, and one thing, one thing I learned, right? And even to this day, I make beats to this day, and, and I'm I'm my own fan. I give myself my own flowers. I get busy with this shit. Till this day, I got a gift. You feel me? Now, if a person has the talent, and then there's people that don't have talent, there's people that exploit that talent to get to where they get to. Mm. But if they don't have the talent, all they is is there, and they just use the exploitation to try and get themselves to where they at. But if you got a talent, you always going to have a talent. Right, right. I could bounce back anytime. Like right now, I'm doing the Dogman soundtrack with DMX last movie. The whole soundtrack. And when that shit come out, I'm bodying that shit on purpose. Just to show niggas we're, who we're, the fuck I was. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Yeah. We're gonna get but to I'm that. doing that. And my man Tone, I told him when he came to me about it, I said, yo, I got something to prove. Because I need niggas to understand. Like, I could close my eyes and make beats. My nigga on an iPad, on a cell phone. Mm. Joint. That's going to work. And I'm not worried about it because I have a gift from God. But if you ain't got a talent, you got to then always try to, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Use somebody with a talent to get in front 
And then when they get in front, they're not going to talk about the talent. Right, right, right. That got them there. And yeah. that's what when that's my concept on when you hear when you hear and like I said, there's more niggas like me. Like my man, Little Rob. I'm just talking about the Murder Inc. situation. Little Rob, Fingers, Reb, DL, fucking um, Jimmy Kendricks. There's niggas out here, son, that put in work, that get busy, but you don't hear about none of these niggas. DJ Shock. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You don't hear about these niggas, huh? Mm. But these niggas is the, responsible for the records that the whole hip-hop world love. But they think somebody else, because them niggas took the front. Their talent ain't there, so they had to do something to make themselves feel relevant. Wow. And then if a nigga don't speak up, then he get lost in the sauce. So me right now, and I'm and I'm being honest, mad niggas been reaching, producers been reaching out to me like, yo, self, I'm so happy you're talking about this now. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I'm saying? I feel like I could talk about it now. You know what I'm saying? Right. And right, this right. shit happened to niggas so much. And and to be honest, man, like, and I'm transparent with my shit. That shit sent me through a depression state that was crazy. I ended up back on Rikers Island <laughs> in the fucking sixth building doing a bid. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It was a little short bullshit bit then I, I'm like this big producer in my mind and everybody and then I ended up on an island with crackheads and dope fiends I'm like nigga this shit ain't ain't it but while right, other right. niggas is taking my credit and making money off of my shit mm. ain't wow. cool nigga ain't cool I get kicked out my crib I lived in Inglewood New Jersey next to Eddie Murphy shit got kicked out the crib lost the crib lost my cars I had all kinds of cars Lost everything, man. Inspired me into depression. So I don't give two fucks if a nigga like what I'm talking about right now. Right, 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 right. I bounced back from that shit, and I'm going to tell the story. And if I can help anybody else come along and they need any help with it, that's what I'm here to do. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying?